irresponsible to do this interview. Yeah, they would have loved to have done it. Trust me. Uh, but uh, if Piers was irresponsible, what was Netflix for doing the drama in the first place? Absolute nonsense. Uh, by the way, I sat next to uh, Fiona Harvey the other day in makeup. We have to get makeup put on. Uh, and uh, she's just there. I didn't know. I sat and she said, hello. So we had this sort of friendly little chat about the weather and awful transport systems in London and all that. And I said, oh, yeah, nice to meet you. And off I went. And outside, uh, somebody said, uh, you know who that is, don't you? <laughs> I said, no. He said, that's the baby reindeer woman. I said, oh, I knew I was right not to give her my number. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk to uh, showbiz uh, commentator, media commentator, Nigel Pawley. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm very, very well. I escaped my encounter with uh, Fiona Harvey, so uh, that was good news. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, let, let, what did you... I mean, what do you make of it? First of all, uh, I think it's quite a good series. And secondly, Piers Morgan was perfectly uh, entitled to interview her. I think he did everyone a, a great service. And, uh, by the way, I think I think it's about five million people have watched it since it went out last night. Uh, so, uh, quite a success story for Piers. Uh, and a fascinating interview with a woman uh, who hasn't quite got a grip on reality. It's true, and, and, and I guess in, in Victorian times, uh, people went to Bedlam and, and looked at the lunatics behind bars and you know, there were circus freaks. I don't think you can shoot the messenger. Piers Morgan interviewed someone who was, uh, you know, by, well, not by herself, well, more or less, she was actually by herself, but um, her, her identity was called Martha, but she was soon discovered. She happily gave an interview to a national newspaper a couple of weeks ago and then stalked the guy who uh, <laughs> who wrote about her, actually, funnily enough. <laughs> uh, and she him a shouldn't call. laugh, but <laughs> it's quite funny. It was a, a, a Daily Mail yeah, uh, yeah, reporter. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, But whatever. I, I've had experience of this, funnily enough. When I, when I was um, a, a reporter, uh, someone used to come in the office claiming that the, the CIA and various people were after them with, with plastic bags. Oh, yeah, young, you young get girl, loads of yeah, 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 you all Yeah, just, but... well, I came back. Came back from a nightclub and uh, discovered that she was in my house because she managed to blag away saying she was a girlfriend. Was your wife? In my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. No, yeah, so I'm just so joking. Be, uh, no, I mean, you, you're right. No, no. People in the media and I, can become targets. Uh, the media these. should not be, people in the media should not be criticising Piers Morgan yeah. for doing an interview about someone in the news. Yeah. If you're going to criticise, criticise a guy who's fictionalised someone he met in a bar when he was a barman and fictionalised a lot of stuff there, went yeah. through a miserable ordeal, but she got identified. Netflix have gleefully streamed this, and that weirdly, millions and millions of people have watched this. How suddenly can they get the vapours because yeah. the person who they've been watching in a fictional yeah. drama suddenly is, is in reality on television and is there... It's explaining Absolutely. why she does it. And I just don't understand why people... They're jealous. Criticize. The journalists who are criticising Piers, the male, uh, went into a sort of fervour of uh, righteous indignation about, oh, go to explo exploitation, and so on and so forth. They're just jealous. They're jealous. Uh, That's right. But, uh, and as I said, you know, if Piers exploited her mental health problems, which are manifest, obviously, uh, what did Netflix do with the drama? It's not Piers' fault. I, I, Netflix uh, started the ball rolling. That guy, Richard Gadd, oh, I tried everything I could to keep our identity secret. Yeah, right. Well, you know, he knew it would have come out. So so let's not get on our high horse about this. Let's remind ourselves that, Nigel, if you don't mind, of a, a few high points in this interview, or if you call them that. Uh, here's Fiona uh, describing why uh, she didn't really stalk Richard uh, Gadd, even though she sent him 41,000 emails. Uh, here she goes. Take it away, Fiona. Were you ever in love with? Were you ever in love with him? Yes. Is that a serious question? Yeah. No. No. It's not a question of. By his own admission, mm. he has said that he led you on at times. And he clearly I gave was... him the brush off. He asked me to sleep with him with a big green spot in his face one day. I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. He asked you to do what? He asked me to sleep with him. He said, would I like my curtains fixed? And I laughed. And he said, that's a euphemism. Do you want me to come home with you? And I said, I've got a boyfriend. 
I so, gave him the brush off big, well, big time, I think. You know, why, subtly, why? subtly so, but the bottom line is, is I think this him? is behind him. No, I don't fancy him. I don't fancy little boys without jobs. <laughs> that sounds awful. That sounds really, really callous, but, you know. She doesn't fancy little boys. That makes two of us. Uh, let's uh, yeah, move on. Let's move She's on. She's very plausible, though, isn't she? Yeah, She's I gotta say, let's, let's listen to her talking about voicemails. Here's the thing: I don't know the truth. Mm. You do, mm. and you've been emphatic in yeah. the number of denials you're yeah. making here. That's right. But many of those things that I've put to you can be proven. You're talking about emails and an email trail thing. All that. You know, all of that. You're obsessed with... Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be horrible. I'm not obsessed you're, with anything. You're, you're, you've gone on at length for a good ten minutes about the emails. Well, only because yeah. the emails... Because of so, the vast number. Well, mm. there's a huge number and voice messages. The voice messages he's kept, apparently, mm. and it and there he is... He's maybe typing me in the holy arms. I don't know if he's got any voicemails. But if he has there. 350 voice messages and it's you... It doesn't mean the drama is true. Um, but is it possible he's got 350 voice messages? I doubt that very much. I just don't think so. You doubt it? Yeah, I, I doubt it. I mean, unless wouldn't he's been you be, taping me. I mean, if you've never really contacted him, if he's he got three... He could have been taping me in the Holy Arms, though. But if he's got 350... I've got coins. Yeah, but if these are on his phone... Yeah, it doesn't matter what whether they're on a phone, tablet, whatever they're on. I've not coincided. But I'm curious, them. why would there even be a possibility of uh, him having... Well, there you go, Nigel. 41,000 emails, 350 voicemails, and she said she wasn't stalking him. She also said she's a lawyer. Uh, she's got lots of lawyer friends, high court judges. I mean, she lives in an... Uh, she's not a lawyer, obviously. She lives in a, some kind of a fantasy world. Uh, but it did create a very... Uh, I thought the drama... Just like Piers' in interview was uncomfortable but incredibly compelling. Yeah, I thought Piers actually, you know, he, he took criticism, but I don't think he was that hard on her. I think he let her damn herself with her own words, which is very clever, mm. a very good interview, because he didn't hammer and say, You're lying. He let her keep on explaining herself, mm. and by explaining, her story unraveled. Yeah. And she didn't realise it. But if you listen to her, she doesn't sound mad. She doesn't sound yeah, no, she, she, she sounds she's very plausible. plausible. She's plausible until you examine the facts. She now says she's going to sue Netflix because she said it's a pack of lies. Hey, Fiona, good luck with that. Nigel, got to yeah. go. Great to talk to you, mate. Thank you very much, Nigel Pauly there. Uh